This GPU, while it's still kind of quirky, is improving its performance with driver updates frequently. To see how performance has changed, let's take a look at some games to see how the card has aged when compared to benchmarks taken in our previous review. Things are definitely interesting to say the least. Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and leave a comment if there's something you want explored on this card. I can't cover everything about a card in the course of a single video, but letting me know what you guys want covered is always welcome. Without anything else to say, let's dive into the test bench specs to get an idea as to how we'll be testing the A750, just to see how the performance has changed. The specs of the system we'll be using to test the ARC card are that of a somewhat mid-range to high-end gaming and productivity PC. With an i5-13600K clocked to 5.4GHz on the P-Cores playing as the heart of our build. Paired with the i5, we've got 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4, clocked to 3600 megatransfers per second, all socketed in a Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite DDR4. This board supports PCIe 5 on the GPU, and while this card only sports a PCIe 4 connector, this will help to maintain the high transfer speeds involved with Gen 4 connections, and also ensures resizable bar will work. To ensure that we don't run into streaming stutters, all games will be run off a of Western Digital Black SN770 PCIe 4 1TB. The sequential 5GB per second reads and just under that for writes will help to ensure that the CPU has access to a high bandwidth bus to secondary storage, helping loading times primarily, but also improving in-game fluidity and LOD pop-in. With the specs of our test system out of the way, let's dive into the A750 and see how the card performs now in April 2023. To start off easy, I began testing with Apex Legends, a battle royale game from Respawn Entertainment based on a modified version of the Source engine. This card provides strong performance in this game, and despite it being based on the older DirectX 11, the card doesn't seem to struggle as hard as it did around its launch with this API. The recent Intel drivers have supposedly improved whatever technology they implemented since the card doesn't run games natively on anything other than Vulkan or DirectX 12. But their efforts have certainly paid off, with the average FPS climbing up to 219 at 1080p, 159 at 1440p, and 93 at 4K. This is beyond playable for even a lot of picky competitive gamers, but I will say that the game doesn't feel much different from the last time I tested it. It could be because I'm only testing with the medium settings, but either way the performance figures collected in April 2023 are over doubled what they were at, at 1080p only 5 months ago. Performance also improved at 1440p and 4K, but the uplift wasn't as dramatic in terms of raw percentages. It's really hard to complain about how this card is running Apex now, and even for the 1% lows they've improved a lot moving to the April drivers. Battlefield 2042, DICE's most recent Frostbite engine game, actually saw minor performance regressions at 1080 and 1440 p on average, coming in at 101 and 79 FPS down from December's measured 111 and 82 FPS. However, 4K saw a slight performance improvement that was outside the margin of error, but was overall pretty minor on average. The maximum performance though improved by 22 FPS with the April driver revision, bringing it up to 75, which is a significant improvement. Given this game runs natively on the supported DirectX 12 Ultimate API, I wouldn't expect performance to have changed significantly, and when looking at the average and 1% lows, things haven't really changed all that much. Performance on the higher end of things is also hit or miss when compared to December's benchmarks, but overall it appears to be basically the same. Our first Unreal Engine 4 title, Borderlands 3, ran shockingly well given the graphical settings chosen. I was expecting it to be playable for the most part, but this exceeds my expectations by quite a bit. While this could be considered a more mainstream title, the 165fps average at 1080p and 114fps average at 1440p show that this card does have the grunt to run this title at high frame rates. Moving into 4K, and the performance on average dropped to 62, which is still playable, and the 1% low of 48 hint at some stuttering that occurred that, while noticeable, it wasn't game-breaking. Would I pick up the A750 to get into Borderlands? 
potentially, but at the same time, the RX 6600 is priced similarly and offers similar, more consistent performance. It's definitely playable, but there are some slight quirks at 4K that can be fixed by turning some of the settings down. Medium settings on the A750 look pretty decent as well, and the stylized assets of the game gave it a consistent look between all the resolutions. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, a DirectX 9 game that has historically performed pretty poorly on this hardware, returned incredible performance games over the December benchmark run. With 1080p returning an average and 1% low of 460 and 176 FPS, the December benchmark run returned only 256 and 120 FPS respectively, which is an almost 80% increase in average performance. 1440p also returned incredible performance figures, with an average and 1% low of 416 and 136. Meanwhile, 4K achieved 365 and 156 FPS. Admittedly, this game is going to be more CPU bound as there aren't as advanced graphical effects yet, but moving from the December benchmarks, this is a huge and welcome improvement that makes this card an actual viable choice for ultra competitive gamers. Would I pick up an A750 if I was going to be competing in professional tournaments? Probably not, but if you're looking for a more inexpensive card that can also play games on the side, then the A750 would provide an excellent experience. Cyberpunk 2077, an open world dystopia game from CD Projekt Red, like CSGO saw massive performance improvements when moving from the December 2022 driver to the April 2023 driver. With the 1080p average and 1% low of 116 and 88 FPS, the A750 shows a solid 50% improvement going to the latest driver. Interestingly though, the performance improvement seems to be the greatest at 1080p, and tapered off as resolution increased. Along with standard rasterized performance, ray tracing performance also improved by 4 FPS on average when jumping to the latest driver, which isn't all that significant. 4K performance with RT was also completely unplayable with the average and maximum coming in at 11 and 12 FPS respectively. So if you want to get in some ray trace cyber bug, then it's possible, but I'd recommend you stick to 1080p. 1440p, while it usually provides a nice middle ground in terms of resolution and performance, hung out closer to where 4K performed than 1080p. So reiterating, I'd probably just stick to 1080p if I wanted to run with DXR on, and 1440p with advanced ray tracing turned off. Fortnite, our first Unreal Engine 5.1 title, performed pretty well given the settings and resolution being tested. With an average and 1% low of 80 and 54 FPS at 1080p, the A750 was able to play this now somewhat demanding title quite well, albeit with some occasional stutters. Moving up to 1440p, and the A750 scored an average and 1% low of 64 and 43 FPS respectively, which is still playable though I'd probably use the built-in resolution scaler to lock to 60. Either way, jumping up to 4K saw performance that wasn't really playable, especially for a competitive esports title, with an average coming in at 32 and the 1% low coming in at 24. Surprisingly though, with the ray tracing enabled, performance at 4K didn't regress that much, with the average and 1% low coming in at 31 and 23 FPS. 1440 and 1080p saw larger performance hits than at 4K, which is kind of strange, but ultimately doesn't have as much of an impact on the enjoyability of the game. 1080p saw the average and 1% lows dip down to 64 and 49, which is about where 1080p was performing without ray tracing. Meanwhile, the mentioned 1440p with ray tracing returned an average of 53 and a 1% low of 41, which while just under the playability threshold for a lot of gamers, also isn't as poor as I was expecting. Performance with ray tracing didn't seem to improve that much with the A750 in this driver update, but this is probably because the game is already built on DirectX 12 and is already running natively on the card. I'd be willing to guess that they haven't really touched the native implementations with these updates. The next titles I merged into a single benchmark a couple of videos ago, and I'm just going to continue to merge them moving forward since they perform so similarly. Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0 actually saw nice performance gains at 1080 and 1440p, but saw a performance regression at 4K. Moving from the December 2022 drivers, these games went from an average and 1% low of 75 and 40 at 1080p to 92 and 47 FPS with the April revision. 1440p also saw a nice 25% jump in performance on average, 
with the a750 returning 78 fps and the one percent low increasing from 30 to 39. the one percent lows didn't improve a whole lot but the improved average and maximum is definitely something you'd be able to feel in game and things would come across as visually more smooth but control wise they wouldn't have changed much i wouldn't say that this game feels unplayable at lower frame rates but for a competitive experience, I'd probably stick to 1080p or utilize the dynamic resolution scaling feature to lock to 60Hz. Either way, this game saw a noticeable performance uplift with the new drivers at resolutions this card is targeted at, and it's hard to complain because it's very playable. Red Dead Redemption 2, our first Rage title, like Modern Warfare 2 saw a performance uplifts at 1080 and 1440p, but didn't see much of an improvement at 4K. With an average and 1% low of 138 and 98 FPS respectively at 1080p, this is a solid 28% improvement over the December 2022 driver revision. Moving up to 1440p and the average and 1% low of 99 and 76 FPS is only an 8% improvement over the older drivers. But the improved 1% low and maximum make this game a more enjoyable experience on this hardware. 4K saw identical averages between the driver versions, and the 54 FPS the A750 returned is playable for a single player title, but for me isn't optimal. I'd probably stick to 1440p as you get a nice middle ground between resolution and performance, and things remain smooth during almost all parts of the game, even during heavy explosions. Another Rage title that was tested is the still pretty popular Grand Theft Auto V, and at the high settings, which is a notch above where we tested it in December 2022, the card saw a massive 51% performance uplift on average at 1080p when switching to the April drivers. This game is built on DirectX 11, which like DirectX 9 is run through a translation layer and turned into DirectX 12 calls. This translation layer is what's been under active development from Intel, and whatever they're doing seems to be helping a lot at lower resolutions. Moving into 1440p, and the 99 FPS average on the new drivers compared to the 90 FPS on the older drivers is a small but noticeable improvement, especially when combined with the 15% improvement at the 1% lows. What I will say is that it's impressive that we're running at the higher settings, and we're still seeing a performance improvement that, while not massive at resolutions other than 1080p, is a welcome improvement and makes this card easier to recommend if you're looking to get into some Rockstar games. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you guys think about the ARC A750 now that performance has improved pretty significantly across some titles. It's definitely interesting to watch this card age like fine wine, but at the end of the day, it's still not to the point where it's an easy no-brain recommendation for the everyday gamer. That's all I really have to say on the matter. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.